Good morning and welcome to the Marketing Rocket Fuel Podcast. My name is Michael. This is Drew. Drew, how are you this morning? Hey, I'm doing great, Michael. We are right in the middle of trying to get everything ready for this uh, um, you know, Charlotte Build Expo. And uh, I guess this is segment two here where we're going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we're learning as we go. So uh, it's it's an interesting experience. Uh, um, I, we said in the last segment, uh, this is our first major trade show. We've done a couple of small shows uh, with a few hundred people attending, but this one is going to be thousands of people. Uh, there's probably about a thousand exhibitors at this uh, trade show. Um, and so we made the decision to go there because it fits with our target market. Um both with the attendees and the other vendors that are there. And so we said, okay, let's, uh, let's do this. And um, like we alluded to last, last week, we said, um, yeah, normally it takes about six months planning to do something like this. And we're going to do it in about 30 days. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're definitely on a fast track and we're learning some things. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, some things that are kind of surprising and, and I feel like I'm I'm in a trade show 101 course right now, um, and uh, so we're just going to kind of share with you guys what we're learning, and uh, and what we today we're going to talk about specifically what we were surprised about, and uh, and and things that maybe were a little bit shocking, and um, they're not necessarily a negative mark on the trade show industry, but they're just things that that are helpful to know ahead of time that are, are probably pretty standard practices uh, throughout trade shows. Yeah, my exposure, for, my exposure to trade shows is either enormous, and that was just recently I went to the Adobe, the Adobe conference in Las Vegas, and there were 10,000 people, uh, attendees. Mm -hmm. and, and if there's a tech company that you've heard of that you're either using their equipment or using their platforms, they were there. So that was my exposure there as an attendee. And then I've been a part of some smaller trade shows or conferences that I helped organize. So I've been on the inside and the outside of these things. This is sort of in the middle. And so what are some things that you are surprised about, Drew, with regards to this, uh, this journey towards the, the Build Expo in December? Well, you know, when we started looking at this, uh, Terry brought me the information and, and said, I think this would be a good fit for us, even though I know it's short notice. And uh, so the first thing you look at, okay, well, how much does it cost to be there? And so a 10 by 10 booth here is about $2,500 uh, just for the spot on the floor. And just, and you said 10 by, that's 10, 10 feet by 10, by 10, 10, 10 feet. foot by 10 foot. Um, yes. not 10 yards, not yeah. 10 meters. None, none of that is 10 foot by 10 foot and eight feet tall. Um, and so, you know, we're like, okay, is, is it worth it for that 10 by 10 space? And so that's the first thing we had to weigh. Um, and we said, okay, you know, we're going to we're going to measure this against what is our potential ROI on this? What's our potential return? How much is a new customer worth to us at a minimum? How much are they worth to us? Um, and then be able to weigh it against that. Um, and so as we begin to weigh the cost, we said, okay, let's try to figure out how much this whole thing is going to cost because it's more than just the booth. We have to have something to put in the booth. We have to work the booth. Uh, we It's a two-day show. So that's two days that we are out of the office, not engaged with email, not engaged with phone calls, not engaged with production work um, to an extent. I mean, we still have our production team. They work independent of, of the leadership in our company. And so we'll have a few of us here at the trade show booth. And, you know, a lot of the production team is still working, but, um, but we don't have a massive team. So that's a big impact on our team. And so we have to consider all of those things when we're doing that. And so we signed up and we said, yes, we're going to do this uh, December 6th and 7th. And so let's start working backwards from there on what we need by the show and, uh, and 
um, and you know, when we need to get it by. And, and of course, everything was yesterday. <laughs> we have to have everything <laughs> yesterday. Um, and the next segment, we'll actually talk more about what we're putting in our trade show booth. Uh, but, um, but after we signed up, we started getting some more emails about other things that cost money. And that was the first big surprise to me because I, I'm like, okay, we're paying $2,500 for this booth. Um, and I know that I'm going to need things like electricity because we're going to have a monitor that's running a, a display uh, during the show. Uh, and that's actually going to take up a, a pretty good space in our booth so that we don't have to spend as much on, on some other things. Um, so I know I'm going to need electricity. Um, we probably need internet. Um, and we probably are going to need some other things that we don't know about. Well, like one of those other things that we didn't know about was at a show this size, they require if you've got more than one person that can carry everything in, if you've got more stuff than one person can carry in in one set, you have to pay them to carry it in. <laughs> and so we've got, we don't have stuff that needs a forklift, but we do have stuff that at least needs like a cart, uh, right. uh, like a roller cart. And so that's going to cost another $260 just to have them roll it from my car to the booth. Now, this is stuff that I'm fully capable of doing myself, but right. because there are so many exhibitors there, they've got to make sure that they get everybody in. They've got a right. small window of time to get everybody in. And so they charge you for that service, even though it's to their benefit, they charge you for that. Um, electricity is going to cost about $300 just for electricity run to the booth, one cord on 120 volt electricity is going to cost me $300 for the booth. Um, let, let me just jump in here, Drew. <laughs> so this is a clear signal that you and I are in the wrong business. We need to switch. We need to pivot to um, conference setup. We, we, that, that's what we need to do. We need to, to do a conference setup company. Yeah. So you've got the, you've got the uh, carry your stuff in mm -hmm. uh, cost. You've got the power your stuff up cost. Right. What are the costs that uh, that you've been presented with that you were not anticipating? Well, internet is one of those things. We expected to pay something for internet, right? But some of their internet plans were upwards of eight or nine hundred dollars. Yeah, just to have internet for two days, because if you think about it, you've got so many people in this one small space in a big cement building they yep. you can't really get i've been in this building before because you know that's where they have uh the annual heroes con and and being a comic book nerd um <sighs> i go to that occasionally uh and you can't get a cell signal in there no. um and and they have a a free internet that's three megabits now my the thing that I'm used to is gigabit, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be. It, it would be tough to do fiber optic internet, and, right? It'd be tough to to maybe even do a live stream if you want. If you were trying to create content around this right. in a live environment, it'd be almost impossible to do a live stream mm -hmm. on that. Uh, you'd be lucky to to be able to um, do any sort of transactional. Uh, things um, with that sort of bandwidth. So, and right. they know that they know that that's, that's built into mm -hmm. what uh, uh, their business plan as far as putting a conference together. Right. And so, so that was definitely an expense that we were not expensive, especially paying $2,500 for a booth. I expected right. some of that to be included within there. Um, but no, they just, they realized the value of that space on the floor Um and, um, and so they know what they should be getting for that. And it's a science for them. They know what they're doing. Yes. Um, and they do, you know, several of these shows a year. And so it's not like they're just like the first time they put on a show. They do this, you know, in, and I think 10 different places around the country. 
Um, so they're doing shows almost every month. Um, okay. So another thing that I looked at, uh, you know, obviously we can't just stand there with an empty booth. We could, that'd be pretty unusual. (laughs) Just stand there with an empty booth. Here's my business card. Here's my card. Here's my card. You know, we're not going to do that. No. Um, but we looked at getting a pop-up display um, or some sort of trade show booth display that's specific, specifically made for that. Um, what we found out on that, now I, I do a lot of, uh, of print. We do a lot of print design here at Escape Plan. We, uh, we order a lot of promotional products. We order a lot of printed products. Trade show booth products are an entirely different animal. Um, yeah. And it's not something that we've done a lot of in the past. I don't, I don't recall anybody on our team designing a trade show booth um, while they worked here. Um, and so, so I really, I knew they were going to be expensive, but I didn't realize how expensive they were just for a back wall that uh, is basically printed fabric that pulls and stretches over a, a an expandable form you're looking at $1,500 minimum for something like that. And to get something decent, you're starting at about two grand. Um, And so right there, if you're adding up the numbers here and and Michael will put those on the screen here in post, but um, if you're adding up the numbers, I mean, you got $2,500, you got $300, you got $260, you got $800, and then you've got another $2,000. And so we're over $5,000 in this thing. Um, if we, if we go that route. And so we had to look at what is a customer worth to us because we got to make this worth a percentage. And if we come away with one new customer out of this, one new client out of this, then it's got to be worth our while to have done the show. And so we said, okay, and I'm going to use round numbers here. I'm not going to use exact numbers, uh, because I, you know, I'm not going to be sitting, putting my financials up on the screen. Um, but, you know, if one new customer uh, at minimum is worth $36,000 a year for us, okay? So if we get one new customer out of that, now that's gross. That's not including all of our costs with doing business with them. And so we got to make sure that we're making more from the show than we're spending on the show. And we're making enough more on the show to ensure that it was worth all of the effort that we put in versus other forms of marketing. Because I could take that $5,000 and spend it on Google ads. I could take it and spend it on uh, social media ads. I could, I could do um, Hulu advertisements and, and things along that lines. Um, and we do some of that as well. But to make sure that we're maximizing our investment, we've, we know that we need to really be coming away with maybe three or four clients out of this show. Out of the thousands of people that we'll talk to, we need to come away with three or four clients. Um, and, but, um, so if 36,000 is about the minimum, that's about, you know, a roughly $3,000 a month uh, client. Or, you know, on the higher end, we can look at, be looking at, you know, seven to $10,000 a month clients. Um, so we look at that end. If I, if I got a $10,000 a month client on there, I've made $120,000 off of the show and I've spent, you know, five or six grand to get that. That is definitely worth the investment. Um, the client, the companies that are there with, that's, we have a 10 by 10 booth. The companies that are there with a 10 by 20 booth or even a 20 by 20 space with all of the full, I mean, they're spending a hundred thousand dollars on this, but their clients that they get, their customers are million dollar contracts, you know, plus. And so it's definitely worth it to do that. And so we have to consider all of those things when we're making our, our, when we're putting our booth together and when we're, um, factoring in the expense. Um, the other thing that we factored in though, was the time away from the office. And that's something that, um, it's hard to put a number on that sometimes because, you know, I, I don't just make an hourly salary, salary, uh, try to say that word three times. (laughs) Anyway. Um, and neither do our employees, you know, we're all, we're all salaried here, but we still have to factor in that time away is costing us 
And so, so that's another expense. There's kind of a hidden expense of what we're doing. And then we have to make stuff to put in the booth, uh, the, the swag, the, the other stuff that we're doing, even if we're not buying the booth pop-up itself. Um, and I'll show you some of those things here in the next episode, but all of that stuff costs money and you got to factor in how much money are you willing to invest in the show to get the return that you're trying to get. And so that, that I think was the biggest unexpected thing, you know, because you, you look at something and say, Oh, it's going to cost me $2,500 to be there. No, it's going to cost you about five or $6,000 to be there. Um, yeah. Minimum, minimum at a show like this. And so factor that in. Um, uh, man, I've been going on here for, for about five minutes. I, no, you're I need fine. to take a breath here. What, is, what else we got? Uh, what other questions do you have about this particular um, thing? Because I know I've been heavily involved in, in this aspect right. of it. And Michael, you've been kind of watching from the sidelines on this. So, yeah, I think, I think for me, um, and, and this is the struggle that companies have and especially marketing marketing companies have is um, you, you almost have to step out away from your own company and be your own client here. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to ask you, if, if a client came to you and they said, Hey Drew, um, we're going to do this builder expo uh, or this build expo and um, it's 30 days away. Uh, what sort of uh, things can you suggest that we do to prepare so that on the marketing side, so that we can maximize our investment? And you just went over a couple of those things mm -hmm. um, to take into consideration the cost to be there, the cost to set up, the cost of not being able to actively prospect away from the conference. But I think I think what you have to consider, especially for you and for this little experiment, and this is what this is, this is, this is an experiment, it's a very expensive experiment, but it's an experiment is to, uh, for me, I would suggest if you were my client is to, is to document it all, right? Because it would be a shame if you didn't get any clients, it would be an, an even bigger shame if you didn't learn anything from it. Right. And so uh, I think for me, if uh, I were to give you any advice, if, if you were my client, it would be document, uh, number one, document the experience, uh, experience, anticipate what you want to get out of it. And you've already said that. Um, and then uh, make sure that you uh, have down somewhere the steps that you did so that the next time you do this, you're not having to relearn it and you can streamline it and, and optimize it. Um, one of the talking points that you had, uh, here in the pregame that we, that we went over was expect the unexpected. <laughs> um, you know, I've been at enough of these to know, uh, we talked about this, that internet's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a huge issue. So, uh, what are you going to do with regards to being prepared for things um, to go, to go poorly or not the way you planned. Is there anything that you have in place uh, to sort of combat that to make the experience not for you but for people that come up to you um, to to optimize that experience? Is there anything that you've done or preparing to do with regards to that? Yeah. So uh, one advantage that I do have is you know we've done some smaller shows and I also do quite a bit of. Um, of presentations to groups of people, you know, uh, different organizations, trade organizations and things like that. And so I've kind of gotten used to, um, I'm going to arrive, there's no internet or, or somebody doesn't know the password to get onto the network, um, that, uh, they don't have, uh, the extension cord is a foot too short. Um, you know, things along that lines. And so some of the things that we do to prepare for those things specifically, uh, we make sure that we can do the show with no internet. Yep. We make sure that everything that we need is downloaded onto the computer. Um, if we're, if we're running a display, we make sure that 
you know, our entire display is not dependent on a network connection. Uh, that's the most important Smart. thing. If you, if you've got a display and you're streaming that in, uh, just, just don't do that. I mean, because right. it's going to fail. It's going to blip at some point. Internet's going to go down. Um, and so we just plan on doing that. Um, if we don't have electricity at the booth, our booth isn't a hundred percent dependent on the technology. Um, and so, but we are paying for electricity. So I imagine if we don't have it, they're going to get it fixed pretty quick or somebody's going to not be di diplomatic any longer. Um, which dip diplomacy seems to be like my strong suit <laughs> until something like that happens. Right. Um, and so, you know, but we, we plan on, on things like that. We plan on hiccups like that. Um, if we forget something at back at the office, well, it's, it, you know, it's 30 minutes minimum yeah. to, to get from here to there. And so we're probably not going to come back to the office for it. And, and if it's something that's that important, um, you know, we, we know who's going to be doing that. Uh, right. so, so we're prepared for that, but we can talk about our product. We don't need notes to talk about what we do. We know what we do. We know what our talking points are ahead of time. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm kind of conscious of right now is everything we've talked about so far is just getting to the show. <laughs> this is just getting us to open right. up. Yep. It doesn't think about, you know, what are you talking about while you're there? What are you, what are your talking points? What are your, how are you positioning yourself to be memorable? And we'll talk about that some more in our next segment. And then in the final segments um, that we do, uh, so we'll do one segment that's going to be some questions from, from the attendees and we'll, we'll record that. We're not going to stream it live from the floor because we already know that's going to fail. Uh, so we're planning for that. Um, but we'll record that and then probably post it the, maybe the next day. Um, and, and so you'll get some questions from the attendees there. Uh, we're hoping to maybe have a special guest or two on the show uh, during that. And so we're kind of planning for that. But if it doesn't happen, we've got contingencies for that as well. So again, it's being flexible with your plan. And then in the final episode in this series, uh, we're going to be talking about what happens after the event, what are we doing there to follow up with any leads that we've gotten? Um, how did we collect leads during the show and how are we following up with those leads? What are we doing? And that's another hidden cost, by the way. Um, if we want the attendee list ahead of time, we have to pay another like $300 for that. Um, so, you know, again, cha-ching, 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 you know, adding up on things but we still consider the show worth doing uh, and we'll find out in that post-mortem, okay, what were our results from this? And do we feel like this is something that was worth doing that we would do again? And, uh, and so, you know, my prediction, <laughs> uh, remember Johnny Carson used to have that envelope and, and he'd predict on there, but my prediction is, We'll come away with some a few strong leads, a lot of, I don't want to say unqualified, but uh, a lot of leads that'll probably go nowhere. Um, some leads that'll probably be good clients for Rocket Fuel Social, um, but just a, a handful of really good solid leads for escape plan marketing. And if we come away with that, uh, I will consider the show a, a really good success. Fantastic. Well, before we wrap up the segment, if you guys have made it this far, thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, leave a review, let us know how we're doing. Uh, Drew, any final thoughts before we uh, let folks go in this segment? Um, just kind of what I've been reiterating through this whole thing. Um, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. If you're a business owner out there, whether you're a solopreneur, a small business owner, or a midsize uh, SME, uh, CEO. Don't be afraid to go out and take that risk, but calculate your risk. Think about what you're doing and think about what your return on that's going to be. And if there's a potential for return, go for it. Go out there and do something and, uh, and don't be afraid. 
fantastic. All right, Drew. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next segment. Peace out.